Hello, this is Remoni and today I show you how to render a skier scene, like a 2D scene as a texture in a 3D scene and then apply some post effects. So the first part is our 2D scene. We make a renderer in skier. We unpack the skier library first, open a renderer and then put the render window on the side. The easiest thing to do to see if uh, the renderer works is attach a circle, like my Hello World in VVV. Circle appears, you can make it smaller and bigger by dragging the right mouse button up and down. Mm -hmm. That looks good. And uh, now I want to make a few circles in like concentric. No, not concentric. <laughs> they are like in a round. Uh, in a circle spread. You will see in a moment. I use a circle spread and attach it to the circle but not directly because the circle spread gives us a list of positions, a vector 2 spread, and uh, we connect it to the for each loop via the splicer, then to the position of the circle and then we go out of the for each region again we cannot directly connect to the renderer because we need to group all of our circles first in a layer and therefore we use a group spectral. Then we can attach it and we see for now there is only one circle in our circular spread. That's because the spread count is on one. If we change the spread count you see there are many circles arranged. So let's add some control over this simple scene. For example, we want to change the color and the alpha, like the transparency for our circles. We all want to control the circles the same, so they all should have the same color and the same transparency. So we can put the fill outside of the for each region. Let's use an HSL node that also has an alpha channel, a hue, saturation, and lightning. Lightness. Yeah, lightness. We connect that one and expose two pins, like two values that we want to control, which is the alpha channel and the hue. We put the alpha value down. We also expose the pin of our radius and we can make the circles bigger and smaller all at the same time. So, we already have four values that we can control. I want to add two more. The first one is uh, how wide the circular spread is. So, how far away the circles can be at maximum and the position. So where is the center of our flower-like uh, design? So. Nice, so these are the values we want to control. So let's pack the whole idea of, the f of this flower, the whole design, into our own node we create our own node by double clicking to open the node browser and we type any name that we want for our node. I call it flower. For now the flower node doesn't exist yet, but we create our own node and then it will appear. If you go back to the node browser and check, you will see now the flower node is part of your node browser. Let's open the flower node. You will see there's nothing inside, but we will change that now by putting the whole code that we wrote except the renderer inside our flower node. To be able to connect the flower now to our renderer, we need to make an output and attach it to the group node. 
output. So now we can connect the flower to our renderer and it appears again. Uh, the next step is we want to control the flower from outside. So we want to control the values that we have on top of the flower as input pins on the node. And we do that by creating inputs for each of them. Double click open the node browser, input, first one is position. Here it's important that you give them uh, specific names because this is the name that you will see from outside on the input pin. We connect exactly where our exposed I.O. boxes were before to replace the hard-coded input with some parameters that we can set. So, let's delete the I.O. boxes. and go back to the flower node where that we can now control. Let's change the count, let's change the hue, let's change the alpha value. Yeah, whatever we had before, we can now change here. And just for the fun of it, let's make a little meadow Let's say that's a small uh, side quest that I'm adding here. I surround the flower by for each, connect the random spread 2D, which gives us random positions. Now I go into the for each region via the splicer, attach the random spread to our position node of the flower, and then go out via the splicer and again attach a group spectral to add it to the renderer. We only have one flower, but we can change that to 10, let's say. And of course, it would be nicer to change the size. First of all, the size of the whole flower itself, and then also the radius. So as you can see now, we have a few little flowers. We can make more populate our uh, meadow, our black meadow, with flowers. Uh, if we want to control a few values of the, of the flowers, you can do that by adding some random. For now, let's say we only control uh, the number of circles and uh, the color with a random. The random node is a generic node, which means you can connect uh, different data types to it. For the count, we need integer, and for the uh, for the color, we need float. So let's attach some first to the count. Expose the count pin. Connect it here to the random. Here I delete. I set my VVV settings to stop on error, so this is why right now my patch is stopped. Um, let me first finish my random mechanics and then rerun the, the patch with F8, F5. So, if we do it like this, you see that the mechanic doesn't work quite well yet. First of all, the random is outside of the for each, so it's talking to all of the flowers in the same way. If I put the random inside, you will see that uh, the number is changing for each flower individually. But still, 
this is uh, not what we want. We want to have the flowers fixed and not changing all the time. So we attach a sample and hold. Control. Which holds the latest value that is active when we click the bang. And now we get uh, a new amount of leaves for each flower when we click. Okay. So this means we have our mechanics for changing the amount of leaves we have. And now in the same way, but with float numbers, we do this for uh, the hue, like the color. In this case, the random just goes from 0 to 1, which is like default, and we can attach the same sample. Let's make our flowers a bit bigger. Let's also change the size of the field in which the random numbers can appear. And then also, if we want to change the seed, the seed means which random numbers randomly appear, which you can control paradoxically, you can add a counter that counts up the seed and attach the same sample to the up pin to count up. And so this is how you change position, color, and a number of leaves at the same time. Okay, so I save this as flowers. And then we continue with our actual task, which is setting these flowers, um, or this one flower, as a texture for a 3D scene. For that, I delete everything that I've made so far, after saving, of course, again, just to make sure. And now I want to work with one flower that we have here. I connect it to the renderer, I set my values, And I animate it with an LFO. LFO is, a, let's say, the motor for our patch. It only gives us a number from 0 to 1. That's all it does. And I want to uh, attach this one to the size of my flower. Mm -hmm. So it's always from the middle going up. Let's scale up a bit the path that it can make. So it's going now to two instead of one. And I want to make it a bit slower. For now, the cycle of zero to one of the LFO takes one second. I put it to three seconds. Change the alpha. And again, on each cycle, like each new flower, I want to change the color. Uh, I want to get yeah, the color and the count. So we have an on cycle pin that we can use from LFO that just gives us a signal, a bang, like a one Boolean change, whenever the cycle changes. 
and again I make my random simple and hold combination. For the count, let's say again, 5 to 20 maybe, just to try it out. And we only change it on cycle, so whenever a new flower appears, we have a new amount of circles in our row. And again, the same goes for the hue. If you don't set anything, it will by default be from 0 to 1. And, again, and now again, color and amount changes on new cycle of the LFO. So this is the animation I want to use as a texture. So everything we are having here is now is our 2D skier world. And now let's make the bridge to our 3D stride world. Uh, stride first needs to be unpacked. Then we need a scene window. Loading. Mm -hmm. And the root scene, which is the basic setup for a 3D scene. Let's test if it works by pressing F4 and we see we will have we have our grid here. Let's just connect a plane where we will now map or put our texture from the skier render on. If you want to change anything about the surface of a 3D primitive, no matter if it's a plane or a box or a sphere, you need to apply material. In our case, we need a texture material. And this texture material now takes any kind of texture, which can be a video or, vid um, or an image. In our case, the, out um, the, the layers of a skier window and we therefore use a skier texture. As we see it's working, the proportions are not set because the size here is not a square. So let's make it square. And now let's make this one big. For now, I still leave the renderer in the back, but uh, we from the rest of this tutorial, we will use and work with the scene window of the 3D. So I can change my camera, can look at this plane if I wanted to, I could also map it on another 3D primitive. If I just click F1 on plane, I will get another patch that will show me an overview of all the primitives I have. So let's also let's try to put it on the box. Instead, and also this works quite nice. So let's go back to the plane and add some final touches. Uh, what that we will do with post effects. Post effects are effects that you after rendering the scene you can apply, like a fog or brightness filter, lens flare. 
the one that I really like is the light streak. Post effects only become visible when you don't use the helper function. So I disable the F4 so that I only see the final rendered scene. And I put the amount of the light streaks up like super crazy. And you see there is a bit of shininess already. One thing that we could change about uh, our flower is that in general we can make the colors a bit brighter. Let's do that with the lightness pin on our HSL. And you see that the effect of our light is already much, much more. Let's just change a little. How the final will look like. And also here we can have a brightness filter, as I already mentioned. That enhances, oh sorry, that was not the brightness filter, that was another brightness node. Bright filter, so. So down. Steepness up. Also the color can change a bit here. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that uh, the streaks of the light can have can be different like in the beginning we had four but we can also have seven or any other kind of light streak that we want another amount of light streak and i'd say i attach the same sample and hold functionality here so that every time a new flower appears we have a different amount of light streaks Go from 3 to 15 or 12 maybe. And now it's changing all the time as we can see. But the LFO cycle can be attached to this one as well. And this is our final result. Every time a new flower appears, also a new amount of light streaks. Okay, that's it. That's the whole patch that you need to do this. Uh, let's make it a bit cleaner. Make sure that the data is flowing from up to down. And look once more how it's done. So the motor of our animation is the LFO. Three is the amount of seconds needed for one flower. So we can make it faster or slower here. We change the maximum distance from the center that the circles can have. If we change that, it will stay smaller. We change the radius of all our circles. Here, this random controls the amount of circles for each round, which varies between 5 and 20. The other one changes the color, like the hue on our color pin. Uh, if there are no 
IO box is attached, it goes from 0 to 1. And then we have our alpha channel here that tells us how transparent the circles are. In this case, this also has a big effect on how uh, bright the light streaks will be in the end. We, on the one hand, render to Skia, and then we render to Texture. The size should be square in our case. Texture material is put on the plane. So in between those two, here is the bridge between 2D and 3D world. Root scene, scene window, post effects. Without our post effects, the whole scene Sorry, wrong thing. Without post effects, the scene would look like this. And with our post effects, we have light streaks and the brightness on all the light points. So, thank you very much.